We're back, baby. I finally made it to Bali. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded two weeks almost exactly. And so I'm excited to get back into a way better flow and really upload two, three videos regularly a week. So got a little bit of office set up to do, but we're getting there. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create Go High Level payment links. They're super fast, easy to use links. I use them on a daily almost, or, or yeah, more like weekly basis when it comes to my clients and managing my projects. So let's jump right into the software and check it out. Once you're in your account, you'll pretty much wanna go into the payments tab and you'll wanna click on payment links. This is where we create the actual payment link. I just created one a couple seconds ago, a couple minutes ago but um, this is just a dummy account that I just used for these videos. We'll go to products because in a high level, everything is boxes and boxes. And so we need to take a product as a box and we need to place that product box onto the payment link box. So to create the payment link, we need a product. So let's go to products and create a product together. And you can see I've got a dummy product right here that I just tested because again, this is a dummy account and I don't have a payment processor integrated to this account. So before we create a product, we theoretically want to go ahead and integrate a payment processor because when you create a product in high level, it will then create the exact same product in your payment processor. And so I use Stripe, I would integrate that and connect that, but if not, you've got plenty of other options down here. So just connect a payment processor and get going. Um, they're all pretty similar. Again, I think the biggest one in the industry is Stripe and most people use that. And it's probably the strongest connection with high level, but um, I wouldn't think about this too much. And it's relatively easy to switch payment processors if you do run into any issues. So go ahead and do that. And then once that's done, we can actually create the product. And then again, once you create it in high level, since they're synced, it'll create that product in the payment processor as well. And if you already have products in your payment processor, you can import mass products with this tab right here, or you could import individual products with this tab right here. But for now, we'll click on here and we'll create a product. So for this example, I'm just gonna name this product one hour consulting call, but anything where you, where, that you provide, whether it's a physical digital product, can be a product in high level. and. Um, so it could be an HVAC repair service. It could be a website build. It could be five hours of consulting services. Just create a fast product, send them a fast payment link. This is exactly what I pretty much use this for on a weekly basis. On Fridays when I bill my clients, I'm like, hey, uh, my assistant, Jolene, who's also a high level expert, she provided five hours um, of consulting services. And then I would send them a, this product and uh, on a payment link. So let's say, you know, again, let's say it's five hours of consulting services. We could add a little description. This is the description just to see where it populates. Um, if you wanted to add some sort of media image as well, but I would keep it very simple. Like this is pretty much all I do is I set up that. If you wanted to upload a media file, you could as well. You could add it to a product collection. Um, I don't usually do that either, but if you want to play around with that, you could do that. If you have some sort of tax uh, that you have to collect, for example, for adult diapers, then you can do that as well. Um, or you could attach a very specific tax rate, but I don't mess around with all of this. Again, I want to show this fast and as realistic as possible. So I would then say, hey, this is a one-time payment. My assistant Jolene's rate is $40 an hour. Uh, so times five, that would be $200 of one-time payment, US dollar. If you wanted to compare it at a price, this price point would then be streaked through kind of like this 25 here at the end. Um, but I usually don't do that either. But again, if you're saying, hey, this is a discount, then you definitely could say, compare it at the price of 250 and we gave you a $50 discount. You would just type that in there. And track inventory, this is more for e-commerce and stuff like that. Um, so I haven't messed around with that too much either, but if you're in the e-commerce space, then I would do that. And then we've got this variant option here. It's again, more for e-commerce. If you have different sizes and colors, when, when, when I'm unsure about what this will do, I usually just click on it. And then like, you can't break a lot within high level. And if you do break something, it's always, you're always able to fix this. So if you're curious, just click on buttons and trying to try to, to read and see what they do but uh, usually you wouldn't have a variant for this. Um, and I'll just leave it like this. If 
you wanted to do some SEO stuff, you can do this down here at the bottom. And that's pretty much it. We went through all of these tabs. It's a relatively short product page. We can now hit save here and we can see, oh, it deleted this field for whatever reason. So we'll go ahead and hit save now. Let's see if it saves it now. It's looking good. And so again, go fast and break stuff in high level. There's, there's not too much that you can actually break. And now that we hit saved and successfully saved it, we now have this product, five hours of consulting services for $200. And we could always edit or delete the product. But now that we have that done, we can go back to payment links. We can create a new payment link. And this is where we select the product. So let's select that five hours of consulting services uh, right there. And then I added that little, this is the description text. And that's exactly what's populating right here. So you can put in a description, but you don't have to. And this is the actual product name. Like this video is populating because we're in this sub account called like this video, which is again, just a dummy account for my videos. And we should probably give this a, a link name. We'll go ahead and we'll try to copy the product name from here. And we'll try to just call this um, link five hours of consulting services because there's no there's no limit. You can have unlimited pr products and limited uh, payment links. So just go fast and create things. And then if you see down the road like, hey, I keep charging the same product, the same price, then you might want to combine it in, 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 in um, one product and have different prices and stuff like that and optimize the products. But you'll, it, it'll take a long time until you get to that point. Until then, just go ahead and create pretty much. And so we've got the product. If we wanted to require this additional info, let's just click on it and we can see how it populates. I usually don't add any of these. If we wanted to change this pay button to book or donate, we could do that as well. I usually just leave it with pay. We can include the branding. You saw it populate right down there powered by sub account name like this video and you could change the branding right here we could add terms and conditions they populate right down here below this um, but again like maybe you wanted to add like hey no refund policy or something like that and you could link out to that refund policy an actual page but i usually don't do that either and i never have problems with that with clients and then you could say hey i want to test this actually with a dummy uh, credit card number usually it's dummy numbers like 424242, um, or you can just go ahead and set it live. I usually just have it live immediately. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got the name. We can go ahead and hit save. Once we hit save, it'll actually create that link and we can copy and send that link right from in here. We've got the link. We could send it to a contact from right here. <laughs> These are um, Game of Thrones dummy contacts. Um, and yeah, but usually once I hit save, I just go back out of here and you can copy the link URL with this little button right here as well. So let's do that and let's populate it right here. We are going to get a little error message up here because I don't have a payment processor. So you shouldn't receive this if you follow the first step of integrating a payment processor. But um, this is pretty much what it'll look like. So you would just send this link right here by email, text, whatever you want, WhatsApp to your client. They would see this. They could type in their first name, last name, email, and then the payment credit card stuff would populate right here. It's not populating because I don't have a payment processor integrated, but just to show that if we hit edit link again, um, it'll pretty much, okay, yeah, it's not populating here anymore either, but it would populate right down here and uh, it's super cool, super easy to use. So that's pretty much it. That's the payment link. Now at the end of this video, I did wanna show one last time how to build out automations for this because that's where a lot of the power within high level lies is that once you click on this automation tab, you can get notified, you can send reminders, you can do crazy stuff. And so this is what I love teaching because it can save a lot of time. And I've created automation specifically for this video, specifically in this folder right here because I wanted to show that you can create folders within fo folders and that that can help you keep your automations organized. So I'm not saying this naming convention makes any sense at all, but I just wanted to visualize folders within folders. So now that we click on that folder, we can go to this payment links folder and here is our payment link purchase automation or workflow. And if you need any help within high level, whether it's uh, just understanding it, learning it yourself, whether you have a team member that needs to learn it, 
whether you just want somebody to do it for you. There's a lot of great links down below this video. I'm launching my own community where I'll provide a lot of free courses and uh, just personalized uh, Loom videos with uh, answers to your questions. So uh, check out the links below and I'd love to see you on the other side. But back to this workflow. Once a payment link is purchased or a purchase is made with a specific product, then we can trigger it. So that's why we have these triggers up here. Some that you could use would be subscription, global product is, and then you would select that product here. Again, this was a one-time payment link, but let's say this was a subscription. We would say, hey, once this subscription uh, is started, then let's trigger this workflow and these action down here. If it's just a one-time purchase payment link, like the one that we just built, then we would say payment received, and we would add these filters right here. We would say global product, these are the standard filters, these first three, and then here's the custom filters pretty much. We would say global product is or is not, could be interesting as well, this right here, and we would hit save. And so definitely check out these, uh, these filters. We could say payment status is, failed success, failed might be interesting to set up a workflow that once a uh, payment is tried, but it's failed due to in insufficient funds or whatever, it would definitely be smart to have an automation of workflow around that. And let's check out the last one. We could say source is from a specific website, manual payment, invoice, funnel, form, calendar. So really high level, so powerful, it's insane. Um, we'll just go ahead and cancel. If you guys need to create that, um, you can. Those triggers, pretty much once we scroll down here, we can see all the trigger categories and you would just go to payments and you would see all the different triggers that you can set up for payments. The ones that I just showed were subscription and payment received. And then I'm adding a system note and I'm saying, hey, once I'm in the CRM, I wanna be able to see this and read this easily and say, hey, product was purchased and if we could have different workflows for each product and then we could just say five hour you know consulting services or something like that to personalize it for each product here but this system note will pretty much if we go back to the crm just to show where that populates it'll pretty much populate um, again these are all dummy contacts right over here on the right side under where are the notes tasks notes there we go and so it'll create a note just like this and it'll add this text right here pretty much right into there just like that automatically for you and i'll say the date the name who it was created by you could edit it or delete it but before we get distracted um, if you wanted to add that step in your own workflow it's just add to notes right there that's what that uh, workflow action step is called and then we could add any sort of tags and these tags could trigger other workflows so that if we add the tag request review, it'll request to Google, Facebook, whatever type of review from them. Depends on your business if you want to do that. We could add the tag sold, um, which I think makes a lot of sense or purchased or something like that. So we would add tags if you have any sort of nurture workflows, like an opt in um, abandoned cart nurture workflow, you would remove them from that. If you have an SMS nurture workflow, you would remove them from that. Email nurture workflow, you would remove them from that. <laughs> and so that action step is pretty much just called remove from workflow, current workflow, another workflow. That's exactly how you would create that with this action step. And then we could send internal notifications via app to all users that, hey, a sale was made. Uh, we're sending this again to all users and redirecting to the contact page or con uh, conversation page. We could send an SMS to our client, to the client's SMS notification phone number and say, hey, somebody purchased this product, here are their, uh, their contact details or customer details. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then we would update the opportunity because ideally you would have some sort of pipeline with different pipeline stages and you would have towards the end of the pipeline a stage where, hey, once a product, a purchase is made, you would move them to the sold stage, to the purchase stage, whatever that might be. So that's this action step right here. And to add something like this, or let's just finish this here real fast. You could have a lead value here within the lead value. You could click on payment and say, hey, I received a payment 
for this total amount. So there's a lot of payment custom fields that you can populate within um, the opportunity within the pipeline. So that's pretty cool. We could change the status to one of this opportunity, which is solid. And um, to do that, all you have to do is type in opportunity. And then if you don't have an opportunity yet, it'll create it. But since this obviously is at the end of the pipeline, we have an opportunity already. So then it would update the opportunity. And so as long as you have duplicate opportunities off, which 99% of the time you want to have this off just the way it is right now, then it'll update the opportunity. If you have it on, it might duplicate the opportunity, which would not be ideal. And moving on to the final bit, we're then sending an email to the client with a receipt, a pre-configured kind of email template uh, saying, hey, thank you for purchasing from us. Uh, and you know, here's your order details. So that's a nice little template. And again, this is just an email and we built out the template in the email builder. And then where you could also send an SMS. We thank you for purchasing blah, blah, blah product from us. We're excited to start working with you. So that's it. Um, let's actually, let's go into settings real fast. Um, if this is a product that they would be able to purchase multiple times, we would want to have a allow re-entry on to let them go through this workflow multiple times. And if you wanted to ha add some sort of nurture or something, you could have stop on response on so that if they respond to the nurture, it actually stops the nurture. Um, but pretty much these are the settings here. I would send this at all times. I wouldn't say, hey, specific window. I would say once they purchase, they're live, they're online in their time zone, wherever that might be. And I would let them let this workflow trigger pretty much. Um, so yeah, with that being said, that's it. This is the magic, pretty cool little workflow. And definitely take the idea of this workflow for other payment processes within high level. So if you're doing invoices or temp uh, estimates, you can easily duplicate this workflow and just change the trigger, change a little bit of the wording and the action steps, and you've got a workflow for that. Let me just show you how to duplicate this workflow. Let's hit confirm here. Uh, you would just hit duplicate, and then you would have one for invoices, one for estimates, one for documents. Like the general structure of this workflow with having something where you add notes, having something where you update the opportunity, having something where you send internal and external emails. That's the, that's the magic of high level. And once you understand the, that system with these action steps, you can, you can again, easily duplicate it for invoices, documents, orders, subscriptions, uh, all kinds of stuff. So let me know if you have any questions. If you do, comment them down below. I'm finally here in Bali and I'm gonna record so many videos. I'm really gonna build out this community. Um, I've got already people in there. I'm hosting my daily group coaching calls and I just want to perfect my community and provide as much value as I can within it. If you enjoy these videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe and like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Peace.